One of the most common injuries in all of combat sports is the broken hand. When a hand is broken, in this context, it is often a broken metacarpal bone. I could name all of the fighters that have documented metacarpal injuries, but we only have so much time. Obviously, hands are going to take a beating in these sports, and the metacarpal bones are especially susceptible to injury. This video will be introducing you to the hand and how amazing it is, but also into the details of metacarpal bones, how they're injured, and a little bit about how orthopedic surgeons fix them. If you like this channel, please share with your friends, and as always, please let me know how I can do better. Also, out of curiosity, I'm hoping to know how many of you have fractured metacarpal, how it happened, and how it was treated. Leave your comments below. Our hands are amazing instruments. As a hand surgeon, I will avoid getting really nerdy on you, but hands are incredibly complex and remarkable in what they can do. They allow us to have the fine motor skills and dexterity to play piano or perform surgery, but they also work a jackhammer or punch somebody in the face. Our brains dedicate a lot of resources in sensing and controlling what our hands do. And many could argue our hands influence our brains tremendously. This is a homunculus, or visual representation of the brain's proportions dedicated to parts of the body. You can see that hands are a large part of what the brain perceives. Hands are made up of 27 bones, when including some of the bones in the wrist. There are 27 joints, 34 muscles, 100 ligaments and tendons, three major nerves in their branches, and many blood vessels to keep it all alive. We're going to focus on five of the bones in the hands, the metacarpals. They are the longest bones of the hand. There's one for each digit. You can think of the metacarpals as the stable platform from which our fingers can work. They are the struts that connect our fingers to the rest of the hand, and they take the brunt of the forces during a punch when we curl our fingers out of the way. The basic components of the metacarpal are the head, neck, shaft, and base. When you make a fist, your knuckles are the heads of the metacarpals. The heads and bases make joints with the bones next to them. Now, a little discussion of the architecture of the hand. It has arches. These arches are formed by the shape of the bones and by the mobility of these bones. Our hand can go flat, but the thumb and ring and small fingers can fold in towards the index and middle fingers due to this mobility. The index and middle fingers are the rigid, stable keystones to the hand's arches, and because of this, are crucial to the overall biomechanical structure of the hand. This is important for treatment decisions as discussed later. So how are they injured? Well, as I discussed in my prior bone video, fractured bones can happen from all kinds of different forces, compression, twisting, bending, or combinations of these can all happen during combat sports. The rules of boxing dictate that fighters are standing, facing each other, and hitting each other with closed fists on their knuckles. This results in compression or axial loading of the metacarpal bones. A classic example of an injury from this is a boxer's fracture of the fifth small finger or fourth ring finger metacarpal neck. However, in sports like mixed martial arts, where more varied strikes and positions are allowed, the metacarpals are subject to many other forces. For example, a fighter may be able to move him or herself behind their opponent. The problem is the rules dictate that they cannot hit the back of their opponent's head. This means that mixed martial arts fighters begin using hammer fists or other strikes that land on the sides of the hand and or they must loop their punches more. I feel these positions result in the thumb and index, first and second metacarpals, being impacted more often and at different angles. This results in fractures more often in the shaft of those bones. An example of this are the fractures sustained by Mark Hunt that required surgery. Also, in grappling, as seen in mixed martial arts or other sports such as judo or Brazilian jiu-jitsu, 
fingers can be hyperextended or twisted, causing the metacarpals to break. It goes without saying that the fighter will perceive pain when the bone breaks. Often, they keep fighting, but they have to fight differently. An example of this was Uriah Faber when he fought Mike Brown and ended up injuring both hands pretty early in the fight. He kept fighting, tough dude, but it was obvious that he could not use his hands like he wanted to. Once the fight is over, the goal is to get the bones to heal in the best way possible and restore function as best possible. Depending on which bone or bones are broken and how the pieces have moved will determine whether surgery is recommended or not. Many boxers fractures do not need surgery. The fighter may notice that his knuckle is less prominent, but this is tolerated pretty well and there's no loss of function. However, Sometimes, surgery is necessary for best function of the hand. Examples include when the fracture rotates, making it so the fingers overlap, or the head or base of the metacarpal is broken, making it so the joint is not smooth. Also, if there is significant compromise to the arches of the hand, such as multiple metacarpals being broken, or if the second or third metacarpals are significantly involved. As orthopedic surgeons, we recognize whether the fracture is unstable or stable, account for the location of the broken bone, and how far the pieces have moved away from each other based on x-ray. We also factor in the patient's goals, health, and priorities. Each patient is different. These are some representative cases that I have done recently. When we decide to fix these fractures, it can be done with pins, screws, plates and screws, and variations of all those. As always, talk with an expert if you hurt your hand. I'm Dr. Lucius Pomerantz, and I appreciate your time. Subscribe if you like this channel. Let's keep moving.